Uh, him and I have done a lot of things in this town, some we can talk about, and <laughs> some we're not going to talk about. My name is Bus Toy, and I've been in Freeport most of my life. I had a barbershop here for 50 years, and uh, I've been a friend of John's, I think I've been a friend of John Shoup's for uh, a whole lot of years. And, uh, but I was pretty much led astray by John as a young fellow because I was a country boy. And John kind of took me by the hand and showed me how the city boys lived. My name's John Shoup. I've lived here all my life. I'm 83 years of age now. Uh, my business was where we're sitting right now, the men's clothing business, and it was started by my great-great-grandfather back before the Civil War. And it was a men's clothing business, and uh, it was a wonderful life. And the great thing about it was that I got to talk with all the old timers telling me what Freeport was like when they were young. And there were phenomenal stories telling about when the distillery was here and they made the whiskey. And a lot of them had parents that drove the buggies that hauled the barrels from one place to another. But it had a reputation that it was everybody in town was a drinker. But it wasn't true because it got so bad that people were drinking that they had to outlaw drinking for a while in Freeport. And so the whiskey kind of disappeared completely until after the prohibition. But uh, at one time, they claimed that when you went out in the town in the evening, you took a bottle of whiskey with you, and when you were done with the evening, you just poured the second bottle of whiskey down the drain because you knew tomorrow you could go back and get another gallon of whiskey. So it had a reputation for people drinking, and it, it continued on into my generation. And it was kind of funny because we had an exchange student come up from South America and proceeded to tell her folks about the history of Freeport and all the whiskey that had been made at the distillery. And when they came up for her graduation, he, the father was invited out to dinner quite often and nobody ever offered him a drink. And finally, one night, they went to a house and going down the steps to the guy's shop, the guy said, would you like a shot of whiskey? And he reached up under the steps and pulled a bottle out that it was hidden that his wife didn't want to know anything about it. And my remembrance of, uh, it was before my stage that uh, they closed them, but I can still remember having women coming into my store that they didn't want anybody in town knowing that they were buying whiskey at the state store. So they would ask me, give me the money and ask me to go in and buy them the whiskey. <laughs> yes, I remember those days. Yeah. That's happened more than once. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the old days were, were kind of tough around here. A lot of rough people come <laughs> through oh, Freeport. Yeah. Yep. Because this was the free portage along the Allegheny River back. Right. The boats could come down, the rafts and so forth, the Allegheny River, and they could park along the shoreline here and not be charged at anything. And that's where they got Freeport. the name Freeport. Yeah. And that was back in. Oh, well, 1830s and. Uh, from there up to the... Steve brings a lot of good points in that book that he wrote yeah, about yeah, Freeport. Very much so. He has an excellent rundown. Well, he's on. done a lot of research. He's done yeah. a good job. Yep. 
Are they ready for another trick? Yeah, right? well, I think we ought to have one. <laughs> on. I started to tell you the jokes about, about he was having an electrical problem back here in the, in the dress room. And I used to monkey around electricity and stuff. So he got out a metal ladder and got me up on the ladder. These wires are hanging there. And I, so I said, John, is the electricity turned off? Oh, yeah, yeah, Bussy, it's turned off. <laughs> well, I got up there and I got to messing around and I put a couple wires together and man, the sparks flew. And I said, thanks, John. I thought maybe Joanne was paying him to get rid of me. I, I didn't know. But every Friday, we got together for lunch, and then we sat at a table like this and we played gin. And it was, we kept score the whole year. And what the prize was at the end of the year was a case of beer. The whole year we played for that. And I mean, it was pride that you, you won the beer. People used to come in just to see who was winning and who was cheating and... Oh yeah, people come in just to watch us because of our comments and calling each other liars and so forth. Well, here's to you. Well, here's looking plus, at you, John. I think you had the same thing I had with the people coming in and telling me stories in the barber shop. He had people come in every day and one in particular I can remember that had a new joke to tell. He never repeated the same story. Hermes Stellatano, we used to come in every morning. He'd bring the paper, bring our coffee, and he would tell jokes all day long. And one day, George Bailey was a magician from out here in the country, and Doc Heilman was a heart surgeon in Don Trenum. They were at the barbershop at the same time. And I remember the three of them standing by over by the cash register and doc would tell a joke and then george would say now just a minute i got one for you and then it would be to Hermie, and he'd tell one and that went on i'll yeah. bet you for a half an hour right people used to just come in and listen to them and and uh, had a it, great time there was more conversation back in those days that people then, would just come in and sit down and even when i was working they would talk away and you would pick up tidbits for instance, I remember one guy lived across the street here, Bert Welsh. Oh, yeah. And Bert was, oh, up in his 90s, I think. And he got telling about his experiences with the boats come, or the rafts coming down the river with the lumber and the oil on. And at the upper end of town, he would row out and meet up with them and take their orders. And then he would come back in and his mother made baked goods. Then they would drive down the lower end of town and, get to, and catch up with the boat and go out and deliver and make the money. But uh, there were so many stories like that. But you know, John, back, getting back to the barber shop, used, guys used to come in and play cards and they'd be sitting there playing gin yeah. while we were cutting hair and yeah. people would come in and uh, it was just a, on a group setting, you know, right. people are always conversation and stuff. And uh, yeah, those were the days, and but, I, I miss the people. Okay, John, do you remember the railroad? Very the, much They had so, the railroad yeah. across in BJ, in the old yeah. BJ. Yeah. And they would bring stuff down from Butler and up from Pittsburgh, carloads of stuff. And then they'd put the locomotive on a turnbuckle, turn it around, and then it would take that, whatever it might be, Back north down. or south. But Freeport was very much of a railroad town. So many of the people that lived in town a big percentage on, on the, railroad. the railroad. Yes. And what's interesting, my great great grandfather had an opportunity to buy a lot in Pittsburgh where the courthouse is now. But he decided against it because he felt that Freeport had a greater chance of growing than, than what Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh did. Huh. So you talk about making a mistake in yeah. life. Yeah. But that uh, was interesting. But a lot of railroaders and just... Well, they had a big Kiskey Junction over here. Yeah. And that was and that big was on the, the other side of the river. Yeah. yeah. And that's... I remember they used to, to bus them, like yeah. from Altoona to Kiskey to right. Conema to... Yeah. Well, what was great was before that was the canal, which crossed the Allegheny River just above Freeport. 
and then it came down, the canal came down through Freeport to Pittsburgh, and I have ledgers telling my great-great-grandfather would get on the boat in, uh, say, on a Friday and go into Pittsburgh, stay overnight, shop, and then come back the next day. And uh, it was well, John, a slow it, trip, but uh, they had a viaduct, which was wood, and the boats were drug across it, and lo and behold, it burned out. Which one? They had the station down here. Yeah. Uh, about what? Between second and third. Yeah. And uh, I remember going down there, and getting on the train, and going down to Aspenwall. They had an yeah. ant down there. Yeah. And I remember that. That was oh. big then. They had a newsstand right at the at the at, bottom. At the bottom. And and uh, that was right. that was big then. Oh, but to hear the trains go through town, I would have cousins come visit. And uh, in the morning, they'd say, did you hear that noise in the night? And we, no, what are you talking about? Here, a train came through town, and we were so used to it, you just slept through it. Well, that, that was the thing. We got, got so used to them even being where we're at oh, yeah. now that yeah. you didn't even notice them going didn't by. Didn't even know they were going by. No, but the trains were big. Yeah. Okay, the magic of Hollywood, John. We got a new table, and nobody knew the difference. I'll bet, I'll bet I could whoop your butt with cards on this table. You ask for it, but I'll tell you, you'll pay dearly for it. John, do you remember the time you came out to the house and we were playing cards and how you and I are always cheating? I mean, you're always cheating. And I told you that the boys were coming up, Karen's boys. And so I got my 357 Magnum out and we had, you knew about it. And so we're playing cards, and you started cheating, and I grabbed the, laid the gun on the table, and the boys looked, and I thought, oh, Grandpa's lost it. He's totally lost it. <laughs> we had more fun as far as playing cards together over the years. And like you say, we had people come down just to watch us. We used to sit back there in the back yeah. every Friday afternoon for about an hour or so yeah. and just play cards. Yep. People would come in to see who was doing the most cheating. And it was always John, but that was okay. <laughs> but you know, John, we've had good years in Freeport. Yep, yep. I can't think of a place I would have rather have spent 50 years cutting hair. Right, well, same, but uh, you figure it was my great-great-grandfather that got here and started his business down by the river originally because that's where all the trade was. The boats were coming down the river. Then when transportation with automobiles and trucks came in, they moved up to the main street here. So things have changed in Freeport every generation. But John, wasn't- But it's for the best. Wasn't your store the oldest family-owned store in the United States? Men's one clothing time? store. Men's clothing yeah. store. Yeah, yep. Started before the Civil War. And I still have all the ledgers and diaries from back at that time. Wow. And it's interesting just to get through. I'll bet it's interesting just to see what you paid for a pair of jeans then and what they're it, worth it now. It has all that information and in And how, there. John, now when the jeans got worn out and stuff, we threw them away. Yeah. Now you pay dearly for those yep. worn Isn't out. Isn't that true? <laughs> it's a big those change. Those worn out jeans. But uh, companies like Woolrich were started same time as our store was started. Yingling beer, I kid. Yingling. It was started in 1829. We were started in 1830. So it was a Pennsylvania firm that. Uh, we know, John, I like a little Yingling. A Boy, you can't beat the old whiskey, you know? Oh, yeah. And the whiskey, Freeport's been famous for that for years. And oh, it's, yeah. It's not anymore, and it's a shame. Yeah. But uh, who knows, someday... But John, remember the characters we had. In, remember the characters we used to have in town? They all had nicknames. Yes. And they all... People didn't look down on the characters that we had in Freeport. They fit in. They were just people that were different than what we were. But, but they were still good people. Talking about that, John, do you remember Ma Kamer's restaurant up oh, here? Oh, my. Yeah. And how the, the people 
passing through, they used to call them bums, would knock yeah. on the door yeah. and she'd bring them in and feed them. Feed them and then they'd be on their way. If you was in that restaurant one time, the next time you went in and sat down for a cup of coffee, Bertha would say, you're not new here, get up and get your coffee yourself. That's right. And they had the round table. Round table to back. Where all the locals came in, you were free to sit down wherever you wherever wanted, you wanted to. to. And one time we had a guy in town that came up to me and said, John, I want to talk to you. He said, uh, I found something on the table up at Ma Kamers and I knew you went want it there. All my buddies, like you, when they would go on vacation, they'd send me these postcards saying, <laughs> Dear Daddy, Mommy's told us so much about you. Why don't you come visit? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, Vernon, don't worry, there's no truth to that, so you can leave it at the table. Well, John, do you remember Bob Moody? Yeah, the Afro American yeah. boxer, yeah. the only guy that ever knocked Joe Lewis out. Huh. And they ran Bob Moody out of training camp. Oh. And he used to come into Ma Kamers all the time. Oh, yep, yeah. yep. And he lived up in Mill Street. Correct. Yeah. Correct, up towards the brickyard. Yep, up. And the brickyard was a big part of the oh. town. As a kid, I can remember going up there, walking up, and our next door neighbor, he was the guy that uh, took care of all the mules and so forth, and he was a blacksmith. Jo and Kerr. John Kerr. John Kerr, yeah. lived over on 4th Street. Right, right. Across the alley from the Masonic Lodge. Right. And, and uh, uh, John Kerr lived across from D.E. Taylor. Yeah. And D.E. Taylor was a surveyor that had Surveyor? Yeah. That had an office up here in, yeah. above your store. He was above, and his son. His son was out in Hollywood, and he yeah. was a producer, director, movie yeah. star. And yeah. I remember as a kid, he married a, a, a British model. And yeah. She was gorgeous. Yeah. And I remember some of those guys used to sit on Kerr's front porch and look over at the models. Over. <laughs> I, I remember some of those guys used to do yeah. that. Right, well. I, I never would do that, but I remember the guys. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think I had a front row seat. Good, good. Yeah. Well, you never... <laughs> My great-great-grandfather kept a weather book because his business depended so much on him. He's along the river, and as long as the river's open, barges are coming down. But if it freezes over, you know, he's done. I can no. remember my great-great-grandfather depended on the barges coming down the river and the rafts tied up with uh, lumber and whiskey and so f or uh, oil from up in Oil City. Oh, yeah. And they would tie up that here free of charge. Uh, yeah, they used to do a lot of, and, and then when the water was low, when the river was low, they couldn't get through. They couldn't get so through. They had a backup. There. Therefore, his business was done. So he had a weather book to show every day of the year what it was like. And, you know, we feel bad when it's raining out, but he was glad to see the rain come down because that Keep brought the up. river up. And then he knew the flow of rafts would be coming from up at Oil City and he'd be doing some business. And it was pretty much the canal ran through town where the railroad now runs through town but uh, it came the whole way from philadelphia the canal from philadelphia the whole way to pittsburgh and fortunately it went through freeport and this brought a lot of popularity at that time because well, freeport john, was a big center well john about when <clears throat> About when was the canal done away with then? I mean, when was the era that, that the canal would have been? I would say about 1860. That, uh, and then is that when out. the railroad started? Then the railroad started. They found it was so much more efficient than what the canal was. And so that's, they took the rail or the, the canal line and that's pretty much where they put the railroad because the railroad follows the rivers and the creeks yes. and so forth yeah. to keep the elevation flat. Yeah. You know, I, I often thought 
that they made a big mistake when they took all the rails up and everything from Butler down to clear down the to rails Pittsburgh. The rails to trails, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, think, too. I think that that could have been passenger trains that oh, would have alleviated a lot of traffic off the of the highways. That's the thing that I would love to see Freeport come up with in the future, a transit system into Pittsburgh. Yeah. Because we have the right-of-way. Right. And why not use it and build it up that way? So I hope yep. that comes about. They did a lot of good things in the past, and I wonder why they did away with for the future. Yeah, you know? yeah. But uh, the canal was a very important part of Freeport at that time. But as far as some of the old things in town, that mirror behind me came out of the old Monongahela Hotel that was more or less a hotel in Pittsburgh that took in all the the big boats that came up the Ohio River from Cincinnati and all. And there was this mirror, and my great uncle bought it and put it in a flatbed truck and brought it up and set it up. And it's been sitting there for as long as I can remember. Isn't it amazing back in those days how they could do that and not break it? And not break it. Isn't it true? Yeah. They didn't have the paved highways like they have now. No, and it's, it's, no. Uh, yeah, you, know, you marvel at things like that, yes. And then a lot of these old buildings that used to be in Freeport. Up here in the corner, John, was the old Hesselgesser store, wasn't oh, it? Oh, sure, the grocery store. Grocery store. Right. And then going up High Street on the right, there was the bank, and then I think it was Noble's Feed Store. Yeah. And then wasn't Valletto's, didn't they? Didn't yeah. uh, Valletta have a little fruit market yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah. And then there was Bronze Meat Market. Yeah. And then there was Newbert's, Newbert's yeah. Clover Farm yeah. store. Yeah. And then on the other side, yeah. well, the, then you had the, the funeral home, but what was in there well, before that? the funeral that, home was kind of interesting in the sense that it was built years ago, and it's a real monument here in town. And uh, that was something that has been around for a long time. Then catacorder from the from the funeral home used to be a furniture store. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then on the other across straight across from the funeral home, wasn't that a telephone company or yeah, a telephone company, North Pittsburgh Telephone. But not the original. The original telephone company was up here by the alley, the old oh, yeah. three port yeah. telephone and telegraph. Right. In fact I think that uh, I know uh, isn't it still in the rock up there? I think Could it's be. still above the door that says North P Pittsburgh Telephone. But that was right up here next to the alley. Yeah. Then across the alley, John, there used to be a newspaper stand. Okay, yeah. And then on up from that, Joe Vitas had a jewelry, jewelry store. Jewelry store, yeah. And then up from that was Ozzy's Dry Cleaners. Yeah. Then there's a building that we had. That you know, Ozzy was quite a character. He was a uh, death. I want to tell you a story about Ozzy when you're about done. anything. But Ozzy, every day I would come as a kid up to my dad's store and he would have a pile of clothes that had to be pressed. And so I had to take it up to Ozzy's. So I would take it up and here is this guy that is a death, what is it when you mute. mute. And I found out more about what was going on in town from Ozzy. He could stand there and talk with me, and I don't know how I did it, but I understood. But I got all the gossip in town from a death mute, which is pretty tough to come by. John, do you remember back in the day when they used to make banya calda? The Italian people would make banya calda. Oh, yeah. And if you ate banya calda... Don't, don't breathe at anybody. Me. No. So Hermie... Stella Tano, the guy that used to come in the shop every day, was going to church Sunday morning. And he had been out Saturday night and eating banya called and so on and so forth. But Ozzy was already in church and he was sitting at the front of the church. And in comes Hermie, smelling a banya called. And Ozzy's going, <laughs> he spied, he spied uh, Hermie. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> Hermie said I could have killed him. But then, do you remember Ozzy had a brother? No, no. That used to hitchhike. 
all the time. And huh. if you picked them up in your car, he changed the radio channel right away. He put on whatever station he wanted. <laughs> I don't remember that. But you know what I remember is I miss the things. As a kid, anywhere I wanted to go, I got out there with my yeah. thumb. Yeah. And I took off. I went to college for four years. And how I got back and forth to college every time was with my thumb. I never had a bad experience. I met some very interesting people, and I think it's a shame. And I hope someday we could get back to that stage that we have faith in each other, yep. that we can let a kid do something like that. But unfortunately, no, we can't right now. But then, John, coming on down, then on uh, High Street, across the street was uh, the hardware, Montgomery's Hardware. Yeah. Yeah, but back in the day, John, there was a lot of business here in, oh, in yeah. Freeport. Oh, yeah. And I have a sheet showing before that the businesses that were in town for back in the early 1800s. And none of the ones that we've been mentioning were very few of them. Are Wouldn't you love to see existing. Freeport back that way oh, again? Oh, I'd give my teeth to be able to go back to see it. Wouldn't my great-great-grandfather was here. Yeah. But I think I learned so much about what it was like when I remember the conversations in the back of the store here in the three captain's chairs where my dad and Doc Rogers, Old who Doc was right Rogers. next door, and the Catholic priest, the four of them got together every morning. Was that Father Sweeney or Father Bonjour? Oh, this was way before that. Oh. But they would sit and shoot the breeze, and in the middle between them, they had a spittoon. And they would sit there and chew tobacco and spit into that. Well, my job every night was to Please. mop the floor and clean up, and I remember how I hated to empty that spittoon. But to this day, I still have that spittoon. Do and you? That's, that's a real relic and something I'm proud of. You and I ought to get together and see if we could hit that spittoon sometime. <laughs> I never chewed tobacco, <laughs> I and I don't either. want to get started at this stage <laughs> in my life.